Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're gonna to be looking at lab on potential and kinetic energy. So when we start a lab, the very first thing you wanna do is ask yourself, what questions do you really wanna answer by conducting the lab to begin with? So the ones that we're focusing in on today are, how can we calculate potential and kinetic energy of a car rolling down a ramp? And does kinetic energy increase or decrease as potential energy increases? So once you have those questions in place, now you can come up with a procedure and a plan in order to conduct your experiment. What we are gonna do is we're gonna take these materials, a ramp, a meter stick, a toy car, and a stopwatch, and we're gonna kind of rig up our own ramp. I just used um, a leftover piece of poster board, and I'm using just the lunch pail and various things to prop it up and make a ramp. And I'm gonna use a little Hot Wheels car and we're gonna start it at the top of the ramp and we're gonna record how long it takes to go one meter. And we're gonna do that three times to get an average and then we're gonna be able to uh, calculate the potential energy and the kinetic energy of the car once we get its velocity. So we're gonna do this one step at a time. The very first thing we need to do is come up with a hypothesis or what we think is gonna happen, right? So our hypothesis states, if we increase the ramp height then the potential energy will blank. And you're gonna write increase or decrease, whichever one you think it will do. And this will in fact um, cause the kinetic energy to do what? Increase or decrease. So again, this is all up to you what you think is gonna happen in this experiment. So I took the mass of the Hot Wheels car, make sure you zero out your scale, and it's 29 grams. I measured my height, it was 17 centimeters. All right, time to do your first trial. Put your Hot Wheels car at the top of the ramp, get your stopwatch ready, push start, let the car go. At that one meter mark, go ahead and push stop and check your time and record it. Ours was 1.25 seconds for the first trial. Okay, so you're gonna repeat the same trial two more times so that we can come up with an average. I went ahead and did it, and my second trial, I got 1.22 seconds, and my third trial, I got 1.26 seconds. Now, in order to find your average time, you're going to need to add up all three trials and then divide by how many trials we did, which was three. So if we add them all up, you can see that we get 3.73 seconds. And then we need to divide that by three since we did three trials. So I went ahead and divided that by three, so we get 1.24 seconds, and that's gonna be our average time. So we went ahead and put in our average time here. Now we need to go ahead and calculate our velocity. In other words, the speed at which the car is really traveling going that fast, right? So we're gonna go ahead and do our distance divided by our average time. Well, our distance, we stopped the timer at the one meter mark. So we know it went a distance of one meter and we're gonna divide that by our average time, which we just calculated as at 1.24 seconds. So I went ahead and did the math and I got 0.81 and our units are gonna be meters per second. So now in order to compare heights for potential energy, we're gonna raise our ramp up higher. So I just took what I had around the house, which was some Kleenex boxes, and I rose my ramp up higher. You can see now that it's at about 28.5 centimeters. All right, so now we're conducting the whole lab again, our three trials at our increased height. You can see that our first one was at 0.86 seconds. All right, and just like the first time, you need to go ahead and repeat those trials for number two and number three. You can go and see and what I got. I got 0.85 seconds for the second trial and 0.84 seconds for the third trial. Now, once you get those trials done, you need to now take the average. So we're gonna add up all of those and I went ahead and got 2.55. Now, again, you need to divide it by how many times you did this or how many trials. We did three trials. So we need to go ahead and divide that by three giving us 0.85 seconds. So that is gonna be your average time. Once you've calculated your average time, notice I went ahead and put it right here for us, we now need to calculate our velocity or speed that the car is traveling. So you do that by doing distance divided by average time, just like we did on the first height. Um, so now we're gonna do one divided by our 8.5, which we just found. Um, just divide that in your calculator and I got 1.2 and our units are gonna be meters per second because distance divided by that time that we just calculated. All right, you guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and work on some calculations, but before we get there, we're gonna do some unit um, conversions. You can start off with the right units from the beginning, but not everyone has the correct measuring devices 
to record their data with the correct units from the get-go. So this is just a quick, easy way to transfer your units to what they need to be for our formula. So we need to change those grams to kilograms. Really simple, all you do is you're gonna move your decimal three to the left. So uh, we had 29 grams now, if you go one, two, three over to the left, now we have 0 0.029 kilograms, and we're gonna change our centimeters to meters. So we used to have 17 centimeters, we move it two to the left, one, two, and now we have 0.17 meters, okay? So we're gonna use our formula, potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. Remember, gravity is our known number um, because it is 9.8 meters per second everywhere on Earth. So as long as you're on Earth, you're using the right number. And you're just going to multiply straight across. As soon as you get that answer in your calculator, you can see that for our lower height, our um, 17 centimeters, we had 0 0.048 joules. And then when we rose it up to that 28.5 centimeters, um, we got 0 0.081 joules. So the higher up we go, the more potential energy we're definitely seeing in this car. All right, so let's go ahead and do our kinetic energy calculations. Our formula says kinetic energy equals one half mv squared, or in other words, one half times mass times velocity squared. So we're gonna go ahead and write down what we know. One half in your calculator is 0.5. It's much easier to write it that way. And you're gonna multiply that by your mass we're gonna keep our mass in kilograms, so make sure you do that 0 0.029 kilograms. And then we're going to multiply that by our velocity. We're taking the velocity that we calculated for our first height, so we're only gonna do one height at a time here. So for the first height, um, it's gonna be 0 0.81, and you have to remember to square it. So make sure that you bring down that squared from your formula. If you do order of operations, we're gonna square that number first before we multiply. So square the 0.81, and then multiply the rest across, and you're gonna end up getting 0 0.009 joules, which honestly isn't a whole lot, right? But we are talking about just a toy car here for kinetic energy or energy in motion. So we're gonna do this whole um, equation again, but for our second height. So the only number that we really have to change here is going to be our velocity because the half stays the same, our mass doesn't change, it's the same car, right? Um, so the only thing that's changing is going to be our velocity. So 1.2 squared. Remember order of operations, we always do the squared first. So 1.2 squared goes first in our calculator, and then you can multiply the rest across, and we end up getting the 0 0.020 joules. Now when we look at these two side by side, you can see the one that was much more shallow and hardly any of a ramp, right? had a very low kinetic energy, but as we rose it up and it got higher and higher, you can see that uh, we are increasing that kinetic energy, all right? So what does this mean overall? We need to go back to our hypothesis, all right? Hopefully you got these right. If you didn't, that's okay. That's what a hypothesis is about, right? It's about testing it, figuring it out, and um, being able to experiment and go further next time. So if we increase the ramp height, then the potential energy will increase, causing the kinetic energy to also increase. All right, you guys, I hope this lab has helped you with the calculations a little bit more. If you're still struggling with the math of potential and kinetic energy, I do have separate videos just going over the math in a very slow pace. Go ahead and check those out. The next step here is to learn all about energy transformations of potential and kinetic energy. I also have videos on that. Check it out. Thank you all for watching. Bye, everybody.